ultimately, we, you know, uh, turn it into um, a thing that has a limited uh, meaning. But rather, we want to open it up and and see how it, and, and it with a feel on a feeling basis, how it just resonates with the uh, creator's experience. So, I will just have you know the creator of a particular scene uh, talk about what they have created in his few or many words as they're comfortable with, and um, I may uh, ask him a question about, you know, know, over here in this left-hand corner where you, you know, you have whatever, you know, you have a a gorilla and three little gypsies and a bicycle and, you know, uh, know, uh, a soldier, Um, can you say something uh, about that? What what brought you to do that? Mm -hmm. And the person will free associate again. At the end of the process, what what invariably occurs um, is that a person's inner inner self has been projected into the box, and, and they've opened up a new direct connection with their own psyche in a way that um, is very satisfying and very um, spiritual, and. Um, then they just leave it, and they, you know, we try not to reduce the meaning, but they take it, and it's a, it's a way of getting more deeply in touch with your inner self, you could say. Would you say that it it's an important thing to kind of externalize the the internal? Yes. Well, it's a good question. Um, it at times it is a valuable thing to do. Um, at other times. Possibly not, but at, particularly when a person is going through um, a, an intense period in their lives, perhaps maybe a very creative and interesting period with many projects, and they're uh, pretty much have overwhelmed their uh, conscious ego, and there's a lot of things going on. Um, talk just talking about it can only go so far. A person kind of hears themselves think and speak, and the therapist or the receiver um, can actually take it in directions where it doesn't really want to go. Hmm. So under those circumstances, going into a, a tarot reading, a divination, or a, swing, a centre or a sample therapy um, is a way to continue to open up all of that richness without degrading it into a this means that or some kind of you know everyday analytical discussion which actually shuts off the experience. Hmm. So hmm. that's that's the realm that my work really takes place uh, in, in, in this material. Interesting. So it's more, I guess what you're saying is that it's more about being a, uh, a mirror that, than kind of overanalyzing it and, and uh, putting too much into it for, for the, the client, right? Absolutely correct. Hmm. Um, it's you know it's, it's it, the metaphor of water is it's a good metaphor. It's when uh, when water is still, it becomes like a mirror. Um, but it also um, when it's flowing, you know, it goes to the deepest depths um, and um, on its own accord, it has its own flow, and so it's like water. Um, that psyche. And, you know, um, why do we do this? I think that um, in the service of getting more deeply inside with our our, uh, spiritual nature or the quiet part inside of us that's very rich and amazing, um, these methods, they're like oracles. They help you um, kind of focus inwardly. Uh, You mentioned before also for people that are very kind of involved in many projects or they're very creative and, and in one sense when they're almost over, uh, w- when they're flooded in a way with, with the, just there's too much going on at the same time and it can't get it out, you know. Uh, do you think that a process like this would help to to keep that flow uh, instead of like shutting down to it or when it becomes like a bottleneck, it becomes too much to actually shut down? Uh, w- would that's, you s- exa- that's exactly right. Hmm. And it's the word is contained. And um, the process it becomes a container for that part, that part of the person. Um, and the therapist uh, uh, takes on that role um, as a, you know, as a container also to where when a person who is going through a very dynamic and like I think most of us are today, uh, stressful and, and you know, lots of stuff going on, mm. they come into this process where there's you know a, a work that's already been opened and but it's contained and they kind of step back 
stay out of it and let the person have their own experience with themselves in a way um, and help them contain that so they can, you know, put a lid on it in a way and go back into the reality level of their ordinary lives and um, come back to it because it's contained and it's a, you know, it's a special uh, dimension that uh, a person is hard pressed to find in other avenues of their lives. Mm. What about if, if, um, if someone picks a lot of gods or, or goddesses from, from various cultures, uh, is there in any regard a way that you can kind of, uh, I guess them primarily for your, for your own point of view, interpret this as uh, a certain set of archetypes or, or trying to kind of reach out through the through the the person or, or or is that is that wrong to say that what do you think no 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 it's a it's a very interesting um, question um, of course the gods and goddesses are activated and stimulated in this kind of work but um, you know it's that's a very personal experience and it's a very you know a very personal lived spiritual experience that people have in terms of who these uh, archetypes are for them, whether they take on you know a, a traditional religious background or they're pagan or they have their own unique relationship to uh, the divine or the sacred, and um, I think it's 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 important that people have an opportunity to you know to do their own unique personal relationship to these things without some authority personage telling them what they sh- they are and what they should think about them. Yeah. So, that, I mean, I think that's largely a problem of organized religion today, uh, from my perspective, is that it kind of shuts off the stream of uh, true religious experience or spiritual experience that's a more spontaneous, natural process that occurs inside people's um, experience. Do, do you think uh, the the main problem is this idea of monotheism, that we only have uh, one uh, God in that sense to choose from, one property, uh, and and a certain and a certain type of property? If we talk about uh, you know Yahweh or whoever, basically, but we have there's there's not. Uh, room for for other types of properties to come through anymore uh, that that has in some certain sense to me at least has been lost if we look at the myriad of the gods that existed in the more uh, the more pagan so to say uh, so to speak um, um, religions from before. Well, yes, of, of, of course there, there's there's that. Um, so um, you know, I don't I don't think it it it's you know the 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 real level that this stuff operates on is underneath that argument of whether it's one or many. And um, and it doesn't really have to be viewed as a problem, you know, the, the problem of monotheism, say, um, which obviously has problems. And I'm sure there's problems in the polytheism as well, sure. depending on what level you come into uh, working with this in your in your life. So I don't I don't know that it, it it I don't really think it's important to kind of witch hunt if you will sure. for the cause or the problem because that that can be itself another problem. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you you see it and and certainly it can be acknowledged. 